Okay, example one for section 10 4 says what is the relationship between arc AB and angle ACB? So arc AB, that's the best my um, computer software does. Looks more like a hat than an arc, but arc AB, if you recall, that means the distance along the edge of the circle starting at A and going along to B. And the measure is going to be an angle measure. Okay, if it asks for length, it would ask how long is that piece. It would be some unit of inches, centimeters, feet, something like that. When it asks for the measure of AB, which is what I'm going to be dealing with, the measure of arc AB versus the measure of angle ACB, that's going to be the relationship. Is there some relationship in the two measures of these things? Uh, to start off with, I'm going to assume they're different. So I'm going to just name them something. So I'm going to call the measure of arc AB, I'm going to call that X. I'm going to call the measure of angle ACB Y. And I'm going to identify those things in my picture here. So can everybody agree that if we're talking about the measure of arc AB, the, disc, the angular measure from A to B is going to be called X. And ACB means start at A, go to C, go to B. So C is the vertex and that's going to be called angle Y. Now, we've already seen something similar to this in this book um, involving angles inside of circles versus the measure of the arc. And that's called a central angle. And the central angle, if you recall, if I were to make a central angle here, let me just draw that segment and I'm going to put in segment BQ. Did you mean to put B instead of D? Did I mean to put what? B instead of D. Oh, AC, uh, ACB. Thank you, Jocelyn. Must be thinking about a different problem that has a D in it. All right, so if I put in BQ right here, that segment, that makes the central angle AQB. And we already know the relationship between the intercepted arc versus the central angle, that the angle measure at the center is going to be equal to the angle measure of the arc. We learned that back in ch chapter 10, 1. Okay, so for vocabulary purposes, angle AQB is a central angle. <coughs> angle ACB is called an inscribed angle. Okay, difference between a central angle and a described angle is where the vertex lies. The central angle's vertex lies at the center of the circle, where an inscribed angle's vertex lies on the edge of the circle. Okay, so inscribed angle, vertex on the edge of the circle, central angle, vertex at the center of the circle. And arc AB is called an intercepted arc. You won't be tested on these on this vocabulary, but I will be using this vocabulary. So as I'm explaining things, when I start throwing around words like intercepted arc or inscribed angle or central angle, you need to know what those mean so that you can visualize what's happening in the problem. All right, now, a couple things I know about this picture at this point. I know both of those, um, this measures x, this measures x. This is some different measure because we don't know for sure they're the same. They may or may not be. We have to determine that. I know that BQ is a radius, AQ is a radius, and CQ is a radius, so if they're all radii, that means that BQ is the same length as CQ. I'm just going to go with those two pieces. And if those two sides are equal, congruent sides, that makes that an isosceles triangle, which means that this angle up here has to be the same as this angle down here. So angles B and C are both going to be the same measure, right? So we started off with the arc equaling X. The angle equaling y, this central angle is the same measure as the arc, this angle over here is the same measure as that angle over there. Now, if you recall back from chapter maybe two or three, um, we talked about exterior angles versus remote interior angles. You might re recall that vocabulary from back then. Um, the basic idea is if you have any triangle ever in a geometric shape and you extend one of the sides out like this, you create an exterior angle. That's what this angle is. That's the exterior angle to the triangle, BCQ. 
And these two angles here, angle B and angle C, are called the remote interior angles. And the relationship between the remote interiors versus the exterior is that these two angles add up to that angle. In other words, X equals Y plus Y. Specifically, X equals 2 times Y. If you did not recall that fact, you could have also determined the, the, the relationship between X and Y. That's what we're really trying to do here is what's the relationship between A, B, and A, C, B? That's X and Y. There's a relationship between X and Y right there, right? So that's what we're looking for is something along those lines. The other way of getting there is like this. I'm just going to draw this out here just to get a better visual of what we're dealing with. This is X, this is Y, this is Y. That's kind of what's happening there, right? This is a straight line here. So if this angle here is X, this angle here is 180 minus X. So again, if you remember the whole exterior versus road interiors, that's X, that's 180 minus X, that's just again, blowing this up. And the three angles are trying to add up to 180, so if I wrote that equation out, 180 minus X plus Y, plus y, that should add up to 180 based on the fact there's 180 degrees in a triangle. Angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 equals 180. And if I want x related to y, I want x on one side, y on the other side, I'm going to move the 180 over here, minus 180, move the minus x over here, plus x. That gets me 2y equals x. Same relationship, 2y equals x regardless of how I do it. Obviously, the exterior angle versus rotor interiors is much more straightforward, but again, there's still other ways around it. Okay, so what's the relationship between A, B, and A, A, C, B? That's what they're looking for, so I'd rather have these two pieces in there instead of the X and the Y. So I'm going to say the measure of arc A, B is equal to 2 times the measure of angle A, C, B. That's the relationship between them. <coughs> The other option, if we divide both sides by 2 here, that'll be 1 half x equals y. That would be 1 half times the measure of arc AB equals the measure of angle AC. For me, it determines on which one I know. If I know the arc, I like the bottom one to figure out the angle. If I know the angle, I like the top one to find the arc. What you simply have to know is when you're dealing with an inscribed angle versus an intercepted arc, the angle is half as big as the arc. The arc is twice as big as the angle. So if you know one, you should be able to find the other. If you know the arc, divide by two to get the angle. You know the angle, double it to get the arc. And get that distinct difference between a central angle where they're the same. Central angle, same as central angle, uh, same as arc, right? versus inscribed angle half as big as arc. Okay, a lot of people get that wrong at this moment. <clears throat>